Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Today I'm so excited because I finally got a new 3D printer. That's going to bring this 3D printer family up to three now. So as you can see here, I went with the Bamboo Labs X1 series. I know, I know, I'm a little late to the party because pretty much everyone and their dog has an X1 series printer, but better late than never. So without further ado, let's dive into this printer. All right, so let's tear into this box. It was quite the large box here, but I'm very happy that it came all completely assembled. In fact, there's only a little bit of disassembly needed as compared to most under three style printers. And you can see here my cat Link, and he's almost as interested as I am in this new printer. So I gotta love the manual being right on top. It's the first thing you see, so it's super easy to access and get to. Looks like I'll have a little bit of a challenge here since I got the Chinese version. I think I can struggle my way through it. So I was wondering if they forgot the AMS spool changing kit, but when I opened up the lid here, I saw they packaged it right inside the printer. I think that took a lot of design engineering to make that work, and it looks like it works pretty well. And we'll remove just a few more protective covers here, and then let's get into the setup. So number one, looks like we should take this brown box out. I'm betting this is our tool kit. So let's see what's in there. Yep, it's a confirmed toolkit. So we got our two millimeter Allen key. There are some screws marked with red tape that we have to disassemble. So then we can pull the AMS out of here. Three, two, one. Pretty simple. Looks like we've got another couple bolts marked in red we need to take out. Then this bottom tray just pulls out of here like so. Then up top, we've got a couple foam and cardboard protective covers. We'll take those off. So now it looks like we're gonna go to the backside and hook up the AMS spool feeding system. So it's pretty straightforward. We just take this white hose and plug it into here. So next up, we've just got some electrical cables to connect the AMS. So here's the six pin version for the top down to the main unit here. And this other one with the 90 degree connector is the four pin. So that'll connect on the printer itself. One thing to watch out for, this little tab here is not actually a locking tab, it's just an alignment tab. So when you put this in, there's nothing locking it in place, it's just friction fit, so it can fall out. This might be something to watch out for in the future. Uh, this might, from the vibrations, fall out and give you some issues, so I'm going to keep an eye on that as well. Next up, this looks like it's for our spool holder. And that one's really simple. Just a couple screws there to attach that to the back side of the printer. Now back around to the front side of the printer. Looks like there's a few more screws in the bed area that we have to take out. And now for the touchscreen monitor. And I've got all sorts of instructions on the back here, how to connect, disconnect the ribbon cable, which way should be the left and right. I think this is super helpful. It is easy to damage these ribbon cables and that would give anybody a really bad experience. And this display just clips into place. Easy. And time for some final very important details, such as turning the power on. And we can't forget pulling the screen protector off the screen. Okay, now things are finally starting up. So you'll get through some start menu. You select your language and region. I won't go through that since my region is very likely different than yours. Then you'll connect to the Wi-Fi, which has to be 2.4 gigahertz, and then you'll do some additional steps to bind your printer. And now the printer is going through a lovely calibration process, which is like a musical symphony to our ears. And really, uh, it kind of scared my cats. So after about 10 minutes of that, we got to my favorite part, the AMS spool holder. So this is super awesome. This is my first time uh, trying to load a spool into it and then seeing how it just grabs it and pulls it into the printer was super awesome. All right, and the next step here was getting an SD card in the printer so that way I could save the time lapses on the SD card. And this had some challenges. So the SD cards I put in initially were not the right file format so I kept getting this uh, error here. So then after some Googling and troubleshooting, I found out I have to format it as a FAT32 file format. So after I got that SD card reformatted, there was no issues anymore. 
So finally, it was time for the first print, which was really easy because it has a bunch of preloaded files. And of course, we're going to go with the Benchy. This was my first print, so I didn't figure out yet how to set up the AMS pool settings, but I said, sure, go ahead, print it anyways. I swear it's PLA in here. So here's a little video of this printing in real time speed just to show how fast this printer is. It is just flying through this Benchy. And again, this is real time speed. Now here's the time lapse sped up a little bit just to make things go faster. And then here is the time lapse that is automatically generated by the printer. I think it looks a lot better. So let's take a look at the finished print here. This is a 25 minute Benchy at 0.1 millimeter layer height. This thing is just flying and definitely beyond the capability of what my Ender 3 can do right now. And the quality is still pretty good. One thing you'll notice about this printer, it has a poop chute in the back and it tends to poop out uh, little filament pieces a lot. So that was one of the first things that I set off to fix. So on my computer online, I found a 3D model for a poop shoot from the Bamboo Labs resource page and pulled this into the slicer and took my first stab at slicing on this printer. And overall, it was pretty easy. I think this came out to be just over four hours of printing. And then I was able to just click a button and wirelessly send it to the printer, which never gets old. It's awesome. So here you can see the giant finished poop shoot and you can see I use it quite a bit and it fits right around back snug just like that so now i've got a nice slide that will bring and direct the little filament poops around to the front side of the printer so it's easy to grab for cleaning isn't that just satisfying now it would have been a really big design challenge but if this plastic piece that was holding the ams inside the printer if that could have been shaped in such a way that it could be used as the poop catcher that would have been really really smart and really slick but instead this one is just waste and we have to throw it away so one awesome thing about this X1 Carbon printer is I can just browse models for my phone. So once I find a model I want, there's multiple selections of build plates, and then I can go and select which filament I want to use, and I will enable the time lapse so I get a nice video afterwards, and I just click and start the print right from my couch. Another great feature is I can just watch the camera in the 3D printing bay from my phone. So when I'm out and I'm not at home, I can just pop it open and see how my print's doing. And if I need to, I can cancel the print. So here is the time lapse from the rocket print. Here's the body of the rocket. And then the screen part is the internal fire part of the rocket. And here's the final rocket parts printed out. So this is pretty cool. This will just insert in the back there. And just like that, I believe it will go all the way to the front as well. Pretty cool stuff. So in summary, I think there's two types of 3D printing enthusiasts. There's one type that likes to tinker and get into the science of 3D printing. And if you're one of those types, I think an Ender 3 or a Voron is a very good printer for you. But if you're the other type that just wants a 3D printer be, to be a tool to get things done, to not ask any questions and just be reliable, uh, I think the Bamboo Labs Carbon X1 series is a great 3D printer. For some of those reasons, this printer is going to help me revitalize my passion into 3D printing and allow me to make more videos for you guys. So I'm really happy with this printer and I'm excited to be making more videos for you guys in the future. And until then, we'll see you next time.